This is a screw. This is a bolt. They're the exact same, just one of them goes into a nut, the other one goes into a threaded part. But if that thread is in a 3D printed part, how did the thread get there? Well, turns out there are plenty of options to make that happen. And today we're going to do a little exploration into tab threads, printed threads, threaded inserts, and we're even going to try out a thread adapter that's not even made for the job. And of course, then we're going to destroy them all for science. So let's figure out how to test these right after a message from today's sponsor. The Smart Orbiter V3.0 is a compact and lightweight 3D printer toolhead built specifically for high-speed printers running Clipper. Designed by Robert Lurinch and manufactured by LDO, it comes out of the box with a custom hardened that includes a 72 watt ceramic ring heater, an ultra short bimetallic heat brick, and an original Bontex CHT nozzle. The extruder has a precision made dual drive system and a smart electronics board that includes a filament sensor, print light, and status LED, as well as a filament eject button up here. The complete tool head comes in at just 175 grams, and it's actually much more affordable than you'd think. Check it out at the link below. Here's our plate of parts, all printed at the same time, so we get the exact same printing conditions for all of these. Let's have a look at the threaded inserts that we're going to use for these tests. So of course, you can't have a threaded insert into 3D Prints video without using the CNC kitchen inserts. Stefan sent me the full set of the ones he has when they first came out, and these genuinely look great. These are the largest ones, the quarter 20, and they all look the same. This is just the one that's the, the easiest to show. They've got a lip at the front for inserting it because these are heated up and then pushed into the material. And then they've got two sets of knurling that go into opposite directions. I guess that is to, to provide a bit more torque and a bit more resistance to being pulled out or torqued out. And then on the inside, they've got some nice cut threading these are just gorgeous. Um, they come in short and in long versions. And yeah, these do look fantastic. They're also the most expensive ones we're testing today. But let's look at an alternative that's a bit less expensive. And that is these. Now, at first glance, these look identical to the ones uh, from CNC Kitchen, but they are quite different. Um, these are ones that I got on AliExpress. They are more expensive than just the basic type I'm going to show you in a second, um, but they're still cheaper than, you know, Western non-direct import versions. Just like the CNC Kitchen inserts, I also got these in short and long versions, but unlike the CNC Kitchen ones, these actually have different outside diameters, so they require a different size printed hole between the long and the short version. These have the knurling going in opposite directions, but if you look at the larger inserts, I think this is M4, now all of a sudden they have the knurling going in the same direction. So that might be something if you pull on them, they might just twist out. I don't know how much of a factor that's going to be. We're going to test that, of course. Also, if you look at the color of these, I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera. The CNC Kitchen ones are nice and shiny and gold, whereas the AliExpress ones have a bit more of a desaturated green tinge to them. So that might actually be an indicator that these are a different alloy. And if you look at the ones from, from Stefan, they're lead free, cadmium free. I try to avoid lead as much as possible. I solder all lead free and it's been fantastic. But yeah, these may actually be a lead alloy and you'll never know. So that's just another factor. If it doesn't bother you, okay. Um, but that would actually be a reason why I'd avoid these. And lastly, these. Now, these are quite different in their appearance, um, as in they don't have that back and forth knurling uh, that the ones made for 3D printing have. That's because they're not actually designed to be an insert that you insert after the fact. These are designed for injection molding. So you have your empty mold, your empty mold cavity with these already in the correct place. Then they add the molding material, the molten plastic around these. And once the mold opens, these are already in the correct place. For example, that is exactly what they've got in my old Zoom H4 in the back here. That's that sort of insert. So because these have the teeth and that ridge at the very front, as you push them in, you're actually squeezing material out of the way. And this entire center section does nothing, essentially. Um, they're good for adding wear resistance to a thread, but I don't think they add all that much in mechanical strength, whereas these just have functional contact area all the way around. And lastly, these. Now, these aren't technically threaded inserts. They are thread adapters. Uh, in this case, it is from the 3 8 tripod thread 
to the quarter 20 tripod thread that you have in the bottom of your camera. So if your tripod has the wrong thread for your camera, you can use these to adapt them. But the way that I use this is that I'll actually print the larger 3 8 thread in my 3D printed part and make a recess for these adapters to go into. And then you end up with a nice large thread making contact with your printed part and not just the small quarter 20 thread. I hinted at something there that I think is essential to understanding why you would want to use threaded inserts in the first place. Like you could just directly screw into a 3D printed part as well. And we're gonna test how strong that is. Why wouldn't you wanna just do that? Save material, don't need any parts extra. You just use a screw, you screw into it. Taking a quick step back, this is an M8 screw or a bolt in this case with a nut on it, it's a bolt. The strength of the screw head, the core material in the threads here and the nut are matched. So there is no one weak part. That is also the reason why this nut is the height it is. It is roughly the same height as the core load bearing material in the screw. So this is a 6.8 millimeter tall nut with a screw or a bolt that is roughly 6.8 millimeters at its core. Now, once you go to dissimilar materials and you still use your steel bolt that is gonna be extremely strong and you thread it into plastic, well, all of a sudden there is one failure point. That failure point is the plastic. And there are a couple ways to mitigate this. So either, you know, you increase the, the engagement. So instead of just doing the 6.8 millimeters here, you could do like 68 millimeters tall engagement that's not always realistic. You could use a weaker screw. You could use a plastic screw. So plastic screws into plastic material, you know, you've got a match again. You could also say, okay, I'm just not gonna use the full strength of this screw or bolt. Um, and that's fine too, but you are wasting material. This is quite a bit of steel that you're using here. Or what we're doing with threaded inserts is we are increasing the amount of material in the plastic part that we are engaging with the thread. So let's say we have a quite extreme example with an M3 screw that has very little thread engagement into the plastic. In fact, I can barely screw this in. There we go, very little engagement. This is gonna tear out quite easily. But now if we take our threaded insert, let's say this is like M8 to M3, all of a sudden we're, we're distributing that load from that M3 screw or bolt to a much, much larger area to, and, and we're engaging much more of our plastic part. So ideally with the threaded insert properly set, we should be able to achieve full strength of an M3 connection again, even if we're attaching to a plastic part. My samples have printed holes with the correct nominal diameter for all of these inserts, with the correct diameters for them. But we're also going to compare against uh, printed threads and tapped threads. So that is our reference. Is it worth just printing a larger thread and using a slightly larger screw? Or should you actually use a threaded insert and which of these gives you more strength? Let's get to checking out which of these options is actually viable and which of these are the strongest. Well, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? These are actually quite satisfying to install as long as you're using the ones that have the little guide sleeve at the end. If you use the ones that are made for injection molding that I've showed you earlier, these ones versus these, these actually push the plastic out of the way quite a lot. So if you compare these on the right are the ones that have that heat set geometry. The ones on the left just are the injection molding type that don't have any guiding geometry. And if you look at the back, um, the ones that don't have the guide geometry right here, these push the plastic out of the way and basically into your hole. On others, it's actually a bit worse. These do too, but they keep it out of your center bore. But of course, we're gonna test these for strength. Then here we have the printed threads. These are just a tapped hole done in fusion. And this one was printed flat. This one was printed standing up. And I tried the one standing up, even the largest thread with like the most clearance, the M8, really doesn't go in. Like you can, you can sort of force it in, but I'm afraid I'm gonna split the part. So these, I will need to go through with a tap again and just finish out that thread. Now with the ones that were printed flat, 
uh, I'm going to go in from behind because these top surfaces sort of were overfilled a bit during printing. Um, M8 threads in beautifully. M6 also works really well. And M5, I think, is sort of the largest size that is still going to go in beautifully. But M4, I think, is sort of the reasonable limit. This one does actually thread in nicely, um, but I don't think that's going to be particularly consistent. Because the M3 thread is so fine and it is starting to near our layer height, the printer really doesn't have enough resolution to actually print the thread. So in the end it's more of a through hole and we're using the screw as a self-tapping one. That's not ideal, it's still gonna grab but you know I would still rather tap this thread and clean it up. So that's what I'm gonna do with these test parts. Um, these are printed for the tapping hole size and these have printed threads in them and I'm gonna clean both of them up and then we're gonna chuck them in the tester. These all went pretty well up until the last one. The challenge here is always keeping them cool, which is why I'm using the denatured alcohol, um, which really helps not lubricate it, but transfer the heat away. But on the last hole, I got a bit too eager. And as soon as the material starts wrapping around the tap, you're just ruining the hole. This, there's no way of saving this. And with that, we've got all these samples prepared. Now, I do still need a test fixture that I can sufficiently destroy these parts with. And that involves making some chips. You may be familiar with these digital torque gauges from Project Farms videos, and they're actually very useful. I'm putting this one into the peak hold mode so that it always displays the maximum torque it measured. And that sort of gives us a combined rating of the torque applied to the insert and also of the pullout force that is resulting from the torque. That of course mixes up two different metrics into one resulting number, but in the real world, I think that is exactly what you're doing too. So I think these tests are quite realistic in that regard. For extra consistency, I switched over to using my Makita drill driver instead of the hand ratchet and I just went to town destroying all the samples that we had prepared. That was actually quite interesting because these parts failed in a way that I did not anticipate. The failure mode we got on 100% of these parts was that um, the printed part failed. If you had an insert, then that perimeter that the insert was inserted into would just straight pull out of the rest of the part. So the weak spot was not how well our threaded insert meshed with our printed part, but the printed part itself on the interface between uh, the infill and the perimeters. So to improve the strength of these threaded connections, you really sort of need to improve the strength of how well the infill bonds to our perimeters. Uh, Cura has an option where it sort of staggers the infill into the perimeters. Uh, that could be very useful here. Or alternatively, printed threads also seem to do the same things, but we're gonna get to that in a second. The results for all the M3 inserts and printed threads and tap threads I had to throw out because I got nothing. This little torque meter is supposed to read 0.3. Well, 0 0.3 newton meters, not 0 0.1. And apparently every one of these M3 threads that I made 
came out lower than 0.3. So all of these just read zero. And even with the M4 threaded inserts, uh, quite a few of these ended up reading zero. So I don't think these are quite valid results. And I'll show you the numbers where they are relevant. So starting off with tapped threads in printed pilot holes, don't do it. So uh, there are a couple of problems with this. First of all, if you're tapping into a printed part, you are cutting way too much material away with the tap. So you're removing so much of the printed perimeter that you end up with that, you know, that center plug. Where is it? This center plug ceases to exist basically once you're done with the tapping. Then the tapping process itself is a mess, especially with PLA, which really likes to melt. And as soon as you have a bit of plastic stuck to your tap, you're ruining the hole. So it's quite a risky process as well. Overall, tapping holes in printed pilot holes, just it's, it's just not worth it. It's just not a good process. What is a much better alternative though, is printed threads. So using the modeled option, for example, in Fusion to create your threads, um, sizes M5 and up don't even need any cleanup. Smaller than that, you, you do need to run a tap through to get the screw to seat nicely. Um, they do interlock quite well with the infill because you have that screw thread that also extends out to the perimeters. That seems to add quite a bit of strength. But talking about the strength of printed threads, these were quite good for like being a free option, but they were weaker than any of the alternatives uh, that use an insert. Even one size down, um, the printed threads, for example, from an M5, were often weaker than an M4 insert. But on the other hand, that also means if you want a stronger connection, you can just choose a screw that is one or two sizes larger than what you would have originally used, and you will still end up with a decently strong connection. You know, compared to using a threaded insert, uh, printed threads, they don't require any extra work. They're just a checkbox in Fusion 360. Um, they're cheaper, of course, they can be lighter if you just want a smaller thread. And maybe also keep in mind that if you're screwing another 3D printed part to this, the screw head on this side also needs some support. And if you have a larger screw, the screw head is also gonna be larger and it's not gonna dig into your part as much. Just, you know, one more thing to consider. Okay, but you came here for the threaded inserts and the surprise with these were actually the cheap injection molding inserts because pulling out the inserts was not an issue here at all, these performed right up there with the nicer inserts. Of course, they were not quite as fun to install and because they don't have that guide tip, the lower end of the insert is always gonna be clogged up with plastic that's been pushed out of the way. These still do improve the strength and durability of these threaded holes. That might change if you use more infill and we have a stronger printed part, but for these tests, they worked out pretty well. Lastly, the fancy inserts from CNC Kitchen or from AliExpress, um, these two performed absolutely identically. But as Stefan has already said himself, uh, his inserts are not necessarily stronger, but they are quality check better, they're more consistent, they're lead free, and of course they help support his work. So that's worth something too, I think. A link to all of these in the description. Lastly, what also worked quite well are these thread adapters, which are sort of a camera specialty 3 8 to quarter 20 adapters. Um, I printed a thread in 3 8 in the part and then screwed in the adapter and then tested the quarter 20 thread in that. And these actually worked quite well, again, because you have a lot of strength from the adapter where it grabs the part. So then the part itself, the plastic fails and it's not the interface between the insert and the part or the insert itself it's always the part that fails. So these are also a very good option and they require no extra tools to install. They just thread into that thread that's already there. Keep in mind though, that all of the options that we tested today did not quite reach the full nominal strength and the nominal torque requirements for the screws that I'm using. So this is a 8.8 grade screw. These require specific preloads, specific torques to be applied to them for them to function as intended. The M3 is 1.3 Newton meters the M4 is 3.0 and the M4 is 6.0 Newton meters nominal. And all these threaded inserts failed at, you know, at best one fifth of that. So steel screws for these adapters still are way over spec. But now I wanna hear from you. Where should I go with this? Should I retest with a larger range of infills and materials? Should I try out different insert types? Or if you have a completely different solution for connecting parts, let me know and maybe I can test that too. In any case, thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, you know, maybe get subscribed if you're not already. And as always, keep on making and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.